before. Uh, but one school wasn't enough for him, so uh, I've noticed that you've gotten degrees in the last four decades. Every, every decade you're getting a new degree. So that's, that's just amazing. Now uh, he's working on his MBA right now. Um, and I know when I was in school getting a degree, in my free time I worked at the library a couple of hours and went out for pizza or did whatever. Um, in his free time, he's uh, started a couple more businesses. So um, he's uh, CEO of a Tapestry. And um, with that, he's also started uh, two other businesses while he's been in school. One of them is uh, in Inspirators, which is, we will all, a lot of us will be experiencing that uh, next year. Um, so a after the service, uh, we'll, we'll, those of you who are going on the Holy Land trip next year, um, Mr. Dan will be here to uh, answer your questions, so we'll stay for that. Um, but uh, one, one thing I also saw from reading up on you was, uh, was a quote from John Wesley that, that you follow that. The world is my parish. And these two, I asked him if they were still in Eugene, and really the world is their, is their home. They're always traveling. Um, you've been in Brazil, the Philippines, um, have you been to Africa too? Yes, Africa and California too. So, so all over the place. So he is truly an international man of ministry. Um, see if anyone. Um, but um, so I'm going to bring him up now. Um, his life story is very powerful. From last year, he had me at Hello. Um, so I'll have him come up and say hello to you all. Welcome. Uh, thank you very much. Good morning. Wow, what a beautiful sunny day in San Francisco or the Bay Area. Um, and one, your pastor is gone. Second, uh, it's a great sunny day. <laughs> and so those are very dangerous uh, times where a guest speaker is hoping uh, that they'll show up. <laughs> but I'm glad you showed up this morning. I'm glad to be back with Tricia, my wife. We're celebrating 28 years of marriage this week. So we have two children. Lauren is the youngest. He just got married about a year and close, a year and a half ago, live in Florida. And my son, Sean, uh, he's uh, in Santa Monica, and I'll tell you some exciting news about what God is doing. And um, so, yeah, the, one of the hardest questions, question to ask these days is when people come up to us and say, where do you live? <laughs> and uh, my response is, uh, how much time do you have? <laughs> because lately, we really have been traveling as a matter of fact, we didn't feel like we needed to get involved with a, a fixed home, either renting or buying, because we just felt like God's sending us in so many different parts of the world to really weave the tapestry that God is doing of nations and leaders coming together and being developed as he puts them anywhere. And uh, we're seeing the move of the Holy Spirit in such an unprecedented way uh, in the body of Christ that it is exciting to be alive and it's exciting to be serving the Lord. Can someone say amen? amen. I'm glad you said amen. I'm happy to hear an amen from a church that wants to do great things for God. So in August, just past August 27, we embarked went to Brazil for about three um, weeks, and uh, we ministered in Rio de Janeiro, and the Lord, that's where actually we started our mission uh, work, uh, when we graduated, uh, Pastor Ed uh, sang at our wedding, at her dad's church, and, uh, and if you didn't remember the story, uh, I had met her father, who was pastoring a church in Georgia, and said, I want to meet this guy, so I have him come and preach at the church. 
I mean, you talk about pressure. <laughs> Trying to meet, uh, you know, the, the parents of, the, of your girlfriend that you're really wanting to propose and say, come out and preach. And so I was nervous. I knew I needed some backup. And so I invited Pastor Ed <laughs> and an Indonesian guy, a Kenyan guy, because I heard, heard Dad loves missions, so I, I, I was going to bring the United Nations. <laughs> and so we came, I said, Ed, you can sing, you can play. He said, I want you to do your best, okay? This is my one shot. <laughs> And uh, as we had, we had. I don't know if you remember Dennis Ramos, uh, one of his good friends from the Philippines. But he played really good. And so we just. I said, you guys go first before I preach. If I, you know, if if I bomb, you guys got to do good. So at least it's 50-50 chance. And so, well, the anointing of the Lord was upon them, Pastor Ed. He really helped me out. Well. 28 years later, I got the trophy. <laughs> Thanks to Pastor Ed. <laughs> hey, Pastor Ed, if you're watching this tonight, or today, wherever you are, eating paella and enjoying, uh, we're, we want to thank you for allowing us to be here, reminiscing those times. And uh, so... August we went to Brazil, and that's where we went right after seminary, and then uh, September, I'll tell you just a little bit more about that later, but one of the purposes that we came today is to rally up the troops that, uh, that's going to the Holy Land, amen? Can anybody say shalom? We got to practice that. And uh, I'm excited, boy, like 60 plus registered already and uh, you are going to have a time of your life it's going to change you it changed me the trajectory of my life my family my vision my my marriage health um, my family kids uh, there's nothing when God says uh, whoever blesses you to Abraham I will bless and when you step foot in the Holy Land, you are saying, I'm going to bless this place. I want to be one with, with God here in His Holy Land. Things turn upside down, and I'm excited for you. And uh, we're going to talk more about that. So after the service, I'm supposed to meet with those that are supposed to go for Q&A, give you some updates on, uh, on our planning, which is going to come uh, really fast, and so we want you to be ready and prepared for that. We, we took a group of people at a very beautiful time of the year, September uh, 21st through October 7th, for the Feast of Tabernacles, and uh, it was something else. It was beautiful. I'll go back to that particular. I've never been in Israel during the Feast of Tabernacles. And I can tell you, it was an amazing time. And I want to incorporate that particular piece into my message this morning. But, but secondly, uh, or right after Israel, we came back, we only had three days. Uh, we had to get ready for Colombia. And so we went from Israel, hopped <laughs> into uh, another plane three days later. Uh, after we had a wonderful uh, uh, birthday at my sister's house uh, for her niece. I said that because um, I have good Filipino food. <laughs> and um, anytime I get a chance for Filipino food, I love Israeli food, Brazilian, churrascaria, uh, or you can eat meat. I love uh, the paisa of the Colombian where you have chorizos and uh, some really thick uh, uh, chicharrones. And, uh, but <laughs> I love coming back home and eating my pancit and getting some halo halo and some really hot bibinka at Manila Sunset. <laughs> so I'm scouting out the place today where all these little places are. 
we were going to hit that, but we were in Medellin. Medellin. Anybody heard of Medellin before Colombia? Some of the older guys are not you know, nodding their heads because if you've ever ever heard of the name Pablo Escobar in the in the mid '80s, he ran a drug cartel. As a matter of fact, there's a, a, a Netflix that's uh, really bored. I mean, it's really rated R. I mean, but I mean, it really is violent. It's got it, it. They threw in all of the the real stuff. Uh, it happened. But he ran the cartel from the uh, mid 80s to the early 90s, about an eight to a decade uh, uh, run, and just ransacked that whole country. In 91 it itself, in, uh, there were 400 policemen murdered. Uh, and then going into the new year, 1,200 violent crimes were reported. I mean, but today I am happy to tell you that God has moved powerfully in Colombia. Churches are growing. People are hungry. It was actually uh, awarded the most innovative city in the world about four years ago. And we were there to minister and God moved so powerfully and, um, and so we came back, and uh, so the question is, where do you guys live? <laughs> uh, we've got a suitcase, <laughs> and probably we can answer, yeah, that's our home right now. Because in just a couple of weeks, and the, one of the reasons why I asked Pastor if I could come and kill a few birds with one stone, and uh, talking about Israel, talking about what the Lord is uh, doing. We are getting ready to head out to uh, Russia on the 27th. And then from Russia, we'll, we'll go to Germany and France. And God has opened uh, tremendous doors for us to develop leadership all throughout um, Europe and also in Russia uh, we, we have an opportunity to be at the seminary, to teach, and to meet uh, the ministry with the Armenian Church and the Moscow Church. I don't know if you've heard lately, but uh, the, the law has come down on, on churches in Russia. They cannot meet in, church, uh, in houses. Uh, they have to I make mean, strict rules about uh, congregating. They could, go, uh, they could go to jail for you know, easily up to a year and be fined thousands of dollars for starting a work. So God's calling us there to be a part of what God is doing. Turn to your neighbor and say, God is moving. You may or may not believe that. But I can tell you, God is moving. God is Moving. And the third reason why we came here, uh, I told pastors, is, is, is really to bring the word of God. I, I can tell you so much about Israel and what God is doing in our ministry. But I want to minister to you this morning before we do the other things. Because I really believe God is moving all around the world. And he really wants to move in the churches of the United States of America. And he really wants to move, get this, he wants to move among the nations of the world. And he wants to use people of the world, just like you and me, who will move with him and do his work. I want to call you to the book of Acts, chapter 17. A passage of scripture that's really important for us this morning and relevant for the body of Christ and I want to speak to you just that simple title God is moving say that with me God is moving just, just make sure it, it takes roots down in your heart. Say it again. God, God is 
I, I can tell you that when God moved in my heart, he changed me. And I can tell you that being a part of his calling and his ministry, I ask him to move wherever I go. Because if God doesn't move, nothing happens. Can you say amen to that? Yeah. I mean, we can have all the frills and thrills. But if God doesn't move, nothing lasting can really happen. What you and I want for our life, for our ministry, in our home, in our business, in our relationships, in our health, is for God to move. But is it simply important or to, to, to know that God is moving? Yes. Secondly, it is so important to know that you move with God. <laughs> because if you know simply that God is moving, but if you're not moving with Him, you don't go anywhere. Amen. Things don't happen. You've got to move where God is moving. Chapter 17 of the book of Acts, which I love the title in itself because it means action. And in chapter 17, we are in the very heat of the action of the church of the living God. In chapter 17, verse 28, to kick us off with this, as a matter of fact, if you don't mind standing for one minute with me, I'm going to try to activate the Spirit of God to move in us and just to acknowledge the Word of God as we stand in reverence to hear it. I, wanna, I, I want to speak this word to you. Verse 28 of the book of Acts chapter 17. Simple but powerful and hopefully moving. And that will move your life. The Apostle Paul is now moving into his, the end of his second missionary journey. And he finds himself right in the middle of an opportunity to preach the gospel in Athens. And as he is entering that city, one thing that he notices is that he notices idols being worshipped all around. As a matter of fact, if we look at verse 23, he recognizes that there is even one particular God who has a label put right in front of it and that says to an unknown God. And so he addresses that very fact of unknown gods and idols in the city of Athens and he comes to a verse that really separates the God that he's preaching among the gods that he's seeing in the city. Are you following me so far? And as he addresses this polytheistic city of Athens, serving and worshiping many idols and many gods and statues and images, he now proclaims a determining distinction of the God in whom we preach and the God in whom we serve this morning. And that's when he said in verse 28, For in Him we live and move and have our being. As some of your own pro poets have said, or prophets, we are His offspring. Let me just read that one more time. For in Him we live and move and have our being. Say that with me. In Him we live, we move and have our being. One more time. In Him we live and move and have our being. 
Father, I thank you for the opportunity to preach your word this morning about a God who moves and a God who gives us life and a God who gives us purpose. This morning, before my brothers and sisters here in this city, we stand in this church unlike other churches that may not recognize us the Lordship of Jesus Christ. But today, we say we serve a God that moves. And we serve a God that lives. And we serve a God of purpose. And I pray that that very same spirit will come upon each young person I see today. Every couple who represents a home. Every minister that carries a ministry and leads one that this power of God will fall upon their life so that we can move with you. This I ask in Jesus' name. And everyone said, Amen. Give me a few minutes, you may be seated, give me a few minutes to just unfold this for you. It's going to make sense by the time you live. But it's also going to give you some, give you an important direction in your life as to the notion of God moving in you. The book of Acts, as I said, is a book of action. It moves. From the get-go of Acts chapter 1, we see God pouring His Holy Spirit. As a matter of fact, He tells His disciples in Acts chapter 1 verse 8, you could probably quote that with me. As He says, you shall be my witnesses unto where? Unto Ju Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and to the uttermost parts of the world. It sounds like go and move. Church, go and move. And before he says that, wait for the promise that had been given through the prophet Joel in Acts 2, which is about the 50th day, or which is the day of Pentecost, which literally means the 50th day, which is a season of harvest as well. It happens that God pours His Spirit upon those that have met in the upper room. And those of you going to Israel, I'm taking you to the upper room, by the way, where it happened. And God poured His Holy Spirit upon around 120 plus people. And they were baptized with the evidence of speaking in unknown language. And from that moment on, you know what took place? The church exploded! From chapter 1 through chapter 28 of the book of Acts, the church goes into action. And the church moves and it doesn't only move where it's easy, it moves where it's difficult. It moves where it's persecuted. It moves where it's resisted. It moves where there are blocks and hurdles and there are problems. When I hear people complain about the things of the church and when we complain about problems, I say, that's what you signed up for. As a matter of fact, that's why you are here in this world. Because if you're here to not solve any problem or meet any need for the kingdom of God, why would God have you around taking up space? You're here because God has a purpose for you. And so the church explodes. Miracles, signs and wonders, people getting healed. Chapter 3, a man's crippled just gets up as Peter says, Silver or gold have I none, but such as I have. Move with me, get up. And he gets up. Powerful, powerful, powerful work of God. But when you look at the book of Acts, you may say, wow, it's so much action there. You probably think, well, it'll happen, you know, for, in three years. No. How many of you 
know how many years the book of Acts covers. How many of you could, would say five years? How many of you could say it happened for ten years? Okay, some of you. Let's get a serve. How many of you could say that it happened 15 years? Raise your hand. Around there. The book of Acts spans 30 years of God moving. And so from the book of Acts chapter 1, 2, and when this church is experiencing an explosion, that was about 50 days worth. And then you move into chapter 3 and 9, that's another 4 years. 9 to 12, chapter 9 to 12, you're looking at 10 years span. You look at chapter 12 and 16 where the Apostle Paul goes, goes into his first missionary journey. He's covering about, about five years there. And then you move into chapter 16 to 19 as he moves into the second missionary journey. And the third missionary, you're looking at six years there. And after that explosion, the Romans now catches up with Paul, arrests him, puts him in prison, sends him to Caesarea, sends him to Rome, and he's later on killed. That whole took place from chapter 20 to chapter 28, eight chapters, all that spanning seven years. Now imagine this, because I really want you to capture what the Apostle Paul was saying when he said that verse 28. Because through all of 30 years, the church has learned exactly what he just proclaimed. That it is in him for 30 years that they have lived. For 30 years they have moved. And for 30 years they have had their being. He is ex expanding their whole idea that the God that they serve as he moves into Athens... And he addresses the Athenians who are coming together religiously, as he says. But they're only kind of listening to new ideas. As a matter of fact, a lot of good ideas they really like. That they kind of adopted. Well, you know, that, that's a pretty good idea. You got a saint for that? All right, let's put that there. Oh, wow, that's a good teaching. Is that what that God does? Well, let's... let's, let's commemorate and memorialize that one. When Paul goes into Athens, he looks everywhere, the Bible says, read chapter 17, and he's looking, and he's going into a mega mall of idols. And he tells those people who are somewhat interested in spiritual things, but yet they're missing the mark, and he makes the distinction by saying, now these idols that you have up here, what is that created inside of you? And basically he tells them, you've just become religious. But what you're missing out is a relationship. And as he speaks about this truth, upon those, upon, upon that, audience that he has, he tells them, now listen, I want you to understand that the God I'm preaching about, and the God I'm serving, he's not just fixed in some wall or a stand or some picture or some idol. This one that I'm speaking to you, in which we have been preaching, is the one who has the power to raise the dead, to heal the sick, to make the blind man see, and to raise that which is dead. As a matter of fact, this God moves. This God, hallelujah, lives. This God is active. And with that being proclaimed, it begs the question for you and I, after 2,000 years of the church's existence, if Paul would walk inside the church today or other churches, would he, be, would he say exactly the same 
anything that he would have that he said to the Athenians? You look religious and you look like you want to learn new things and new concepts and spiritual things. But don't think for yourself that the God we serve is just like any other God to get good ideas or even maybe have that particular one do some things for you. But this one, this God that we speak of, this Jesus, he moves, he feels, he lives, he understands, he hears, he touches, and he loves. That's the difference. If you would have heard, if you, if Paul would come here this morning and would recite verse 28, you would have heard him in Greek say, En auto garsomen kai kinometa kai esmen. In him we live, we move, and have our being. And that's in Greek in which it was written, in which most likely is what he spoke. Let me say that again, because we'll go back there and dissect that. En auto garsomen kai kinometa kai esmen. Four particular words here that are so important. The first one is the word in him. In him. The word in Greek is auto-o, which is in Latin, auto. In English, we say auto. The word auto literally means self. Automatic is self-functioning. Automobile is self vehicle or that it moves. Auto esteem is my self image. Auto. Auto. -o. And when the Apostle Paul qualifies the role of the church or the existence of the church which is you. Your definition today it's not what this world tells who you are because this world is working so hard to try to tell you who you are. Just look at you too. Everybody wants to be somebody. And everybody's trying to copy somebody. But the Apostle Paul says, our existence does not lie on the external things and what the world is telling us who we are, our existence and our, our identity is found in auto, in Him. The other meaning of the word auto is Himself. Himself. Or literally it means as Yahweh said to Moses in chapter 3, as he is raising up Moses, and Moses questions the call of God upon his life, when God says, I want you to go to Egypt and tell my people, to tell Pharaoh to let my people go. Let my people go. And Moses <laughs> Sort of had a conversation, more than a conversation. Moses has this rap session with God, a little on the side of borderline complaining and a lot of excuses. And he comes back to God and says, Well, listen, God, <laughs> I really, listen, I really, he starts off, I really don't think I can do this. And God says, I understand. And then he says, well, more than that, God, uh, you, you may not really know, but if I go to Pharaoh, he's going to ask me. Remember, 
where he says the first time, I am not qualified. Second, he says, what are they going to ask me when they say, who sent you? And God says, I understand. And then he comes back at God again and says, <laughs> there's, some, there's answers there in between, but I'll come back to that. But he says, he says but, but God, listen, you really don't understand because I can't speak. And God says, okay. And then he says, as a matter of fact then, God, could you send someone else? <laughs> because I, I can't do it. And God says, listen to me and listen carefully. Don't you think I know who you are? And don't you think I know what you can do? Don't you think I know where you came from? Don't you think I know your baggage? Don't you think I know your sins, your failures, your weaknesses? And I'm still sending you because I'm not just sending Moses to be Moses in front of Pharaoh. I'm sending Moses to be a representative and an ambassador of whose you are. And he says, as a matter of fact, when you get in front of Pharaoh, you tell him, Alto, I, that Alto is the one who sends you. Which meant what? In Hebrew, he himself sent me. Thank you for that amen. Because <laughs> that, that excited me. I'm not representing Dan Sandoval in Brazil, Colombia, Israel, Russia, Germany, France, Mexico, and wherever God will send me and wherever God sends you, he may send you just over in San Jose or San Francisco or across your neighborhood. But when you take a step for God, understand it's more than just you that's taking a step of faith. You are representing the name of Yahweh. I am. He himself sent me. He himself sent me. I've got an order. And so with that order, in him is my authority. In him is my power. In him, even if I'm rejected, in him is my glory. In him is my, my identity. It is all in him. And then I love the next three words. They're actually verbs. The first one, in him, auto, is, 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 is it's not a verb. It's, 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 a, it's literally a pronoun. It's I. The person himself is with you. I don't know if that somehow rattles you this morning, but when you stepped here, it was more than just a shell of wood and brick and a sign. You were coming in to the presence of the Almighty God. And that's why when we worship the Lord, we're pushing the evil out. When we pray and fast and we come together to hear the Word of God, we're pushing back idols and enemies and we're pushing back demons and principalities over all the earth. I, I can't even contain it with you because you know what? If I don't believe it, I'm dead. My family's dead. My relationship, my marriage would be dead. But if I believe that in Him, in Him, there is salvation, there is healing, there is power, there is revival, I can do all things. Through Christ gives me the strength. Amen. Give me 10 more minutes here, and we're going to end this with a powerful time of prayer. I really believe God wants to do something in everybody's life today. I'm a little bit passionate about this, if you haven't noticed, because this wasn't in my notes. But I think churches have settled. We've settled. 
God's looking back at us and saying, we got too many excuses. we got places to go, people to see, and things to do. And you're complaining about what, what color the should the cupcakes be? Let's go. You know, I, I'm on my jubilee year. That means, you know what that is, right? Last, last February, I hit 50 years old. Wow. And, 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 and I shout, shouted for that, but these days I'm also shouted, ouch. <laughs> Yesterday, I was just walking and, and she stopped and I took a, another step and I twisted my ankle. I'm like, ouch. And I'm like, for, for a couple of hours, I'm like limping. You know, when I was in high school, I was like, let's go, run. <laughs> Here's what I'm saying. I got no time to play around. Yeah. I'm 50 years old, and I'm not going to play church. And I'm not going to take up space. I know I'm going to see that King of Kings and Lord of Lords in just a matter of a few years. Even 50 years. I'm like, 50 years? What? Where'd it all go? It just, even if I want to live 50 more years, get to about 100, like a George Burns kind of, you know, <laughs> age, 50 years from now, we'll go like that. And you know, we can look at a television for eight hours and don't blink, and that whole day's gone. And I don't want to get to my 100 year and say, oh, well, where you been? Well, um, take a look at the chair I sat on in my church. <laughs> in him we live. We move. And we have our being. The word lives, so men comes from that word zoe. It literally means life. Somebody say life. life. Life is in the body. You are the body of Christ. And if we, the church, is the body of Christ, life lives in us. Where else that life lives? Life lives in the Word. John says, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Verse 4, Through Him all things were made. Without Him nothing was made that has been made. Or verse 4 now, In Him was Zoe, life. And that life was the light of men, and the light, uh oh, duck now, because this is a big rock. Yeah. And the light shines in darkness. That's you. In other words, when God puts the church in San Bruno, and God puts you in the middle of a wicked city or in darkness, you have the light to shine in darkness. And if darkness persists, ask the question, is my light on? Maybe your battery is, you fill in the gap. <laughs> and if is dead, change your life. Because if you profess God to be in you, God is a God who moves in darkness, who changes things in darkness, and is found in darkness. Because he sends you there to be a light. Oh, I know I come maybe once a year, but... I'm with you. We're one. We are the church. 
We are life. And we are to be life giving. The second word is and then we live and then we move. Kino o meta. I'm not going to ask you to say that. But you know the word from the English term kinetic. Kinetic basically means to be in motion. Those who exercise are applying kinetics, in which you apply motion. And when there's motion, there's life. If there's no motion, we get sick. And so the doctor says, move, exercise, <clears throat> go around, keep yourself active. And we know the phrase that says, if you don't use it, oh, you know that one. <laughs> if you don't use it, you lose it. I got to stay active. Because if I don't use it, <laughs> boy, it seems like it, I, I, I can get apathetic. I can get cynical. I can get negative. I can dry, get dry and get cold and get bitter and unforgiving. I, I, can, get, I can get very uh, fleshly. I can have motives that are not godly. Uh, I know you can say amen to that because the more that we don't get close to God, we don't activate our faith, we don't use what we know and that we should be doing, we lose it. And God says, Move. In Him we live, and that life moves you. Because uh, we, we were we we're staying in a, in a house, and the, the um, owner loves animals, statues. So around the pool, there's a deer, there's a white tiger, um, there's a turtle. I, I, I didn't expect much from the turtle. But one of the things that I noticed is that once in a while, some birds would come around the area. And you can notice which ones have been there and which ones haven't been there. Because the ones that come just swoop right down and just land on the deer's head or ears. Or especially it just goes right straight to the white tigers. Just drink. Come on, drink, come on, just stay on the statue. But when there, I you notice, some strange birds coming migrating, I especially saw one and observing, it will just like hover around, kind of testing. First it will be like hovering, you know, a few feet away, and then it will hover around closer, or even just sort of tempted to react. Testing if the white tiger is real. And then all of a sudden when it circles enough and it figures out that the white tiger is all paint. It just kind of goes right up the head, right up the nose, right up the ears, up and down, and even doing their thing. <laughs> I wonder today, in where God has called the church, that in Him we live, and in Him we move. That Satan, when he saw you fired up for God, and you said, Lord, I'm going to follow you. Boy, those demons, and the Satan's like, don't get near him. He's a white tiger. And then years have gone past. You got settled in, got a little accommodated, got a little relaxed, got a little bit just distant. And then now, the enemy is just like, let's see if he reacts to this. No, no reaction. What if he goes with this? No, no. Well, what if, well, if we throw this in front of him in this city? In this family, oh, no reaction. Go right in. Just 
They ain't going to go. That Christian, that church, they're not going to go. And we're never a threat to the enemy. And so he moves in. He takes territory. And he dumps on us. Lastly, if the musicians would come back, I want you to get that song ready. I was really touched by that. Jesus be the center of it all. In just a few minutes, I'm going to ask you to receive prayer at the altar. I'm going to ask you to step out of your seat and move. Move with your faith and your heart. You see, you really, you say, you know, in the churches today, well, well, well don't, don't, don't rattle the boat too much. That's too late for that. We've been rattled, shaken, beat up. And we can't, we can't afford to just sit still. What God is calling us is to take a step of faith and move with him. I love the last word because the last word says that in him we live, we move, and we have our being. That verb is esmen. As a matter of fact, if you read the Greek, it just has one word. It really isn't translated as have our being. You, you know the word literally is? It literally means one or the other. Is, are. It's a verb. But the problem with the verb is and are is that we don't associate action with it. Because we think of a church and said that is my church. And so we put the material thing into the is and said it is a thing. But when you look at the word of God, you are the temple of the Holy Spirit. He's not talking about a casing. He's not talking about, as Paul says, idol that is made with human hands. But he says you are the temple of the Holy Spirit. And when he says that you are is, are, it is a verb. It is a thing, if you say a thing as a created thing, you are something that was created to move, created to live, created to experience who he is. I told you earlier that I went to Israel during the Feast of Tabernacles. It is the feast of Sukkot, and Sukkot literally means make shift shack. And the Feast of Tabernacle recognizes the fact that God took care of his people when they were out in the wilderness, and that he tabernacled among them. And when he tabernacled among them by the what? By the pillar of fire by night and the cloud by day. Just, just hold on here. Every time God moves, they needed to move. Because if they did not move during the day, it means that in the desert place, they will be scorched with the heats. They will die. And at night, the pillar of fire or the Shekinah glory of the Lord would surround them for various reasons. One, for light. Second, for protection. And thirdly, is to know that God was still with them. Because it was dark. They needed to know where God was. And so he appeared in night, and he tabernacled among his people. Now catch this, because this is how they celebrate tabernacle, the Feast of Tabernacle. When God would move, sometimes he would stay and camp for a day or two, Sometimes a month, sometimes a year, 
But as long as it's moving, they were to follow it. The presence of God. If not, they would be in trouble. What I loved about the whole idea was that I was, the whole thing was, Feast of Tabernacle in Israel is like a big deal. Everybody comes and there's tuxes and ties and the whole family. Uh, we don't dress up anymore in the U.S. with, with our holidays. But, but Feast of Tabernacles, I mean, the fine dress. Everybody, the, the kids that got their little suits, why? They were coming in with their bests. Well, one of the things I noticed was the makeshift tabernacle. I thought, well, why, why don't we just kind of pimp it up a little bit? I mean, let, let's, let's kind of do each other, you know, make it, make it cool. No, just branches. And I finally had to go back to the Word of God. Leviticus chapter 23, and I started beginning looking at God was making sure that they didn't get settled. That they didn't get comfortable. That they, they weren't putting their address and that they were ordering it from Amazon. I want the 24 karat gold. And I want you to put 345 Sinai Road God said, no, because this is temporary. We're going somewhere. We're going to do something. We've got a purpose. Today, if there's anything you need to leave this place with, he said, all this is temporal. But you, you're eternal. You're going somewhere. But more than that, God has a purpose for you to make sure that anybody that doesn't know that gets to know that. And so when they ask me, where do you live? <laughs> right now, I'm not settled. Truthfully speaking, I don't have a house because we're traveling. As a matter of fact, we're going to be spending three months in... Medellin, Colombia. Because we're going to launch this initiative with entrepreneurship. We're going to teach. We're going to preach. We're going to all three of us. We're going to learn Spanish. I learned. I mean, I, I, I speak Spanish and Portuguese and I want to learn Italian and French. Those are my next two. Because if God needs me where he wants me, I gotta go to where he goes to do what he needs to do. Today you're looking at a missionary in my heart. Not because I am one of the ones that are called, no. It's because I represent I am. Whether it is San Bruno, San Francisco, San Diego, or Medellin, Colombia, where he leads, we follow. I want you to stand to your feet. So after the service, we're going to talk about Israel. This morning, we're talking about you moving with God. God is moving. And let me just plug this because I told Pastor Ed, I said, Pastor Ed, can I share what God is doing and how he's moving in us? Many of you might have heard him say he's going to Dubai. That was true until a month ago. We were already preparing to go to Dubai because God moved me a couple of years ago through a dream and he says I want you to go to Dubai didn't know anybody I made phone calls landed at a church to preach at a Pakistan Indian church and God pulled two 
pulled a couple out of the sidelines of just being quote unquote Christian got so on fire for God he said we're going to plant church a church in Dubai well that's been about a year and a half ago that church today is running about 150 in service bringing about three buses every Friday they are now in the second building because they had to leave the one hotel ballroom to get another one that sits 300 and we were going to go there to help develop leaders and plant the next church. And God took me to Acts chapter 16 and 17. <laughs> and if you read chapter 16, they were going to Bithynia, and the Spirit of the Lord says, don't go there. And then at night, he receives a Macedonian call and says, come toward us. And I had me camp there for a while, and I began to feel my spirit just hold off on Dubai. Well, finally, when I came back from Colombia, I called the pastor and said, should we go or not? I wanted to know if there was a call. He says, you know, my boss, I think, really doesn't like me for being a Christian. And I got laid off. And I have 30 days to leave Dubai if I don't get a job. Would you pray for us? I said, should we come and encourage and be with you? He said, no, not now. Because I might be out of this country. If I get a job, I'll have to buckle down. And so it's not the right time to come. Next year, come in February. And I said, okay, now, Lord, Bithynia's close. In him, we live, we move, we have our being. I'm his. Lord, where do I go? I can stay where I am. A lot of things to do here. He says, no, wait a minute. I need you in Russia, France, and Germany. I make one simple call to follow up on an invitation. And during our conversation, my friend says, if there is a Macedonian call right now, it's Europe. Come and help us train leaders and plant churches. In just a matter of few days, God has set up meetings. God has set up preaching engagement. God is providing. And so one of the reasons why we're here this morning is to take up an offering, to go to Russia, to be sent by churches. Got two more churches next week. I'm trying to fill up some more. We know God is sending us. So if you want to be a part of that ministry, we invite you to go with us to Russia and to Europe. But now, what about you in San Bruno? Paul says, you serve the living God. And God is with you. And this morning, with your eyes closed, <clears throat> If somehow this message has touched you to say, you know, I don't think this is just another Sunday. I think God's speaking to me. I think I want to move more than I've ever moved. Or I want to start moving more. I want to start listening to what the Holy Spirit might want me to do. I want to start making sure that I am in motion for Him. Or maybe you need God to move in your life, in your home, with your family, with your children, in your business. I was in Long Beach. If you don't mind looking up here, I just thought of something to encourage your faith. I was in Long Beach preaching at the Christian Life Center, Pastor Hinojosa. Right after the service, I noticed a couple was waiting for me and everybody was gone. She had a baby in her hand and said, last year you were here to preach. And God moved you to say what you said when we told you we couldn't have a baby. And my wife can attest that I'm very careful when I say things like that, but God moved in my heart and I said to her, 
God wants me to tell you that in a year from now, you're going to get pregnant. You're going to have a baby. She was telling me that in front of me, and she said, here's Herschel. I left that church, I was like, yes! I heard from God, and I moved with God. And I said what he wanted me to say, and I did what he wanted me to do. I sang the song he wanted me to say. I gave what he wanted me to give. I knocked on the door he wanted me to knock on. I testified and witnessed. I did what God called me to do, and because of that, God is honored, and the world has changed. God is moving. Can we move together today? If this message touches you in some way, would you come and take a step with me and let's finish at the altar with a word of prayer and let's believe the Lord for a mighty outpouring of His Holy Spirit in your life. As we sing this song, come and fill the, the, the altar. I want to pray a closing prayer together. Jesus said, the center of Jesus be the center of your church. Will the church raise their hand right now and just acknowledge that? Jesus Father in you, the, the church moves church. and lives and has their being. And every knee will bow. Hallelujah. And every tongue shall confess you, Jesus. Jesus. Father, you see these hands, and I pray today, whatever they represent right now, that miracle. God, if you don't move, nothing happens, Lord. We need you to move. We need you to appear in our living room. 
in our bodies, Lord, in our finances, in our hearts, dear Lord. Lord, cry on forgiveness. Lord, in Jesus' name, maybe they've gotten cold. Move, Holy Spirit, right now. Move, Holy Spirit. Yes, Lord, bless from this day, dear Lord. Let it be known that there is a God. There is a God who moves among his people. And if you believe that prayer, say amen. amen. Now the final prayer as a church. Church, would you say you're ready to move with God? Say amen. amen. I know that you're celebrating. Is it 28 years? Wow. 28 years. You ready to move some more with God? Yes. Bridgepoint Church, let, let, let your pastor hear. Is this going to be on Facebook? Yes. I'm going to ask it loud. So he can hear your answer loud. Is Bridge Point Church in San Bruno ready to move with God? Amen. Wow. I hope you heard that, Pastor Ed. I hope you heard that. Because when you come back, you have a church ready to move with God and with you as a leader and Sister Anna. And with that, I want you to raise your hands as a total sign of surrender as a whole church. Father, you must be smiling because there is a church that's not going to bow down to this, the idols of this world. Here, Rich Point Church will rise as a mighty army and will move in the territories you send them. May it be San Bruno or in the uttermost parts of the world. There may be just another Dan Sandoval in here that's going to be sent around the world. Use them, Lord, for your glory and for your honor. Empower them, hallelujah, to do signs and wonders for the kingdom of God. And to move back, dear Lord, the gates of hell in which you said the gates of hell shall not prevail against you, my church. Now, Lord, we go upon your authority. And in the name that is above all names, we go as Moses was sent. I am that I am sent me. He himself sent me. We love you. We thank you. And we give you glory and honor in Jesus' name. And everybody say loud, Amen. 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 Give the Lord a big hand of praise. Before you leave, I'll turn it back to Sheldon or whoever is in charge. Amen. We're going to have a meeting for, I don't know if it's here or somewhere else, but I'll need five minutes to get a couple of things. But um, anyways. Oh, you're in Pacifica, somebody told me. I'm prophesying. Another church in San Bruno. Oh. Sorry, Pastor, I didn't, I didn't steal the church. So I'll thank uh, Pastor Dan for that. So, Pastor Dan mentioned before, I think you saw before we leave, we're going to take a, a second offering for Pastor Dan's mission. So, if um, the bell should be coming forward, if you want to write a check, you can make the check out to Bridge Point. We'll make sure Pastor Dan. Brother Sheldon, I gotta tell them this. I told you about my son. Um, my son just left his job and um, turned in his uh, his notice in his apartment. He's going full time in ministry with us. Oh. Um, after that, we'll just gather right here. Um, those of you who are going on the Holy Land tour, and uh, Roger Dan will put on his tour guide hat and answer questions for us. So, um, can we have the ushers come forward now?
us as a church. And for those of you, again, who are going to go on the trip, please stay. If those of you aren't, um, just a quick prayer. Father, again, thank you for this awesome worship today. Thank you for, for Dr. Dan and Tricia and their message that, that you can never be stagnant, that you can never be stationary, that, that we need to be in motion for you because God is always in motion for us. So this week, just let us be that light where there's darkness. Let us go where you're calling us, Father. Let us listen to what you have planned for us and let us make disciples of all nations. We lift this up in Jesus' mighty name. Amen.